Good afternoon. My name is Matt DeSarno. I'm the special agent in charge of the Dallas Field Office of the FBI. Today I'm standing proudly with Colleyville Police Chief Michael Miller and Rabbi Charlie Citron Walker of Congregation Beth Israel. I'd like to recognize my other law enforcement partners in attendance from Homeland Security Investigations, Texas Department of Public Safety, the Fort Worth Police Department, and others, as well as our community partners from ADL, the American Jewish Committee, and Secure Community Network. Thank you for joining me today. I'd also like to thank Colleyville Center, Good Shepherd Catholic Community, and city officials of Colleyville for the use of numerous facilities and resources in support of this crisis and this investigation. Although a global FBI terrorism investigation is underway, we wanted to provide an update as best we could regarding last Saturday's hostage taking here at the Congregation Beth Israel in Colleyville, Texas. This attack, rooted in anti-Semitism, has shaken the members of Congregation Beth Israel and extends to the entire Jewish community, many of whom we have heard from as they worry about potential and persistent threats. We will each speak and plan to take a few questions as time permits. Chief Miller, I'll turn it over to you. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome back to Colleyville. I wanted to begin my remarks by just acknowledging the bravery of the hostages on Saturday. Their actions were nothing short of heroic, and I'm so thankful that they are reunited with their families. Good job, Charlie. We continue to work closely with the FBI on this investigation. Tips and leads continue to come in. For example, on Sunday, we, were, we received a tip from a Colleyville resident who had interacted with a suspect on Friday on a bike trail near the Colleyville soccer complex on Pleasant Run Road. Uh, CPD officers found a mountain bike that was chained to a fence uh, along the railroad tracks near the soccer complex. And FBI agents were called to the scene to process and photograph the bike. They were able to unlock the bike lock with a key that was found in the possession of the deceased su su suspect. As we've had time to review the details of the operation on Saturday, I would like to acknowledge the efforts of a few that stood out. As many of you know, we have a consolidated dispatch center with South Lake and Keller. We all share one main police channel, and our dispatchers are actually Keller police employees that are housed at Keller PD. By all accounts, the team working Saturday morning did a phenomenal job. They spoke to the suspect and to the rabbi for an hour and a half before negotiators took over. At the same time, they were inundated with 911 calls, calls from the public, calls from the media, all the while continuing to provide services to the two other cities. Really a fantastic job by these professionals. And as I said on Saturday night, the call originally came in as a disturbance. The first officer arrived on the scene at approximately 10.45 a.m., just two minutes after he was dispatched. This officer has two and a half years' experience with the department, and with, with the insight of a veteran officer, within a minute and 23 seconds, he says over the radio, this could be a potential hostage situation. Extraordinary job by this young officer to quickly recognize the gravity of the situation. And this set the tone for the entire incident. I would also like to recognize the FBI's rapid response and enormous resources that they dedicated to resolving the situation. All told, told the FBI had 182 personnel dedicated to this incident. Their skilled personnel and aggressive, sound decision-making by FBI Special Agent in Charge Matt DeSarno ensured that we had the right personnel with the right skills on the scene to handle any situation that may evolve. We are eternally grateful for the support provided by the FBI this week. I would also like to thank the Colleyville Police Department and all of the agencies that responded to assist. On duty, South Lake and Keller units deployed immediately when they heard the radio traffic, and soon our partners in SWAT, which also include Roanoke and Trophy Club, quickly made their way to the scene. In total, we had approximately 252 law enforcement personnel from 13 different agencies assist us and many more city departments and volunteers. I won't take the time to thank them here, 
but we will be posting a list on our social media uh, to ensure that we recognize their significant contribution. In closing, we live and work in a wonderful community. Our elected officials, city manager's office, and many city departments voluntarily deployed to provide support that day. We're also grateful for the support, the support of the public, both in terms of providing tips and leads, but also for the outpouring of appreciation to the department. Thank you all. At this time, I'll hand it over to SAC Matt DeSarno for his comments and an update on the investigation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Miller, <clears throat> and thank you for the continued service to your city and community of Colleyville. It's been outstanding to work with you and with entire, this entire community and your department throughout this crisis and this investigation. Again, my name is Matt DeSarno. I'm the special agent in charge of the Dallas field office of the FBI. My area of responsibility includes Colleyville, and as the chief just explained, we respond in force when the law enforcement community is in need. The synagogue hostage taking in Colleyville underscores the continued threat violent extremists pose to religious institutions, particularly Jewish institutions and other Jewish targets. The FBI is and has been treating Saturday's events as an act of terrorism targeting the Jewish community. It was committed by a terrorist exposing an anti-Semitic worldview. It was intentionally targeted in a selected location, the Congregation Beth Israel Synagogue. Our thoughts remain with the victims and their families. Our thoughts are also focused on the entire Jewish community. We recognize that the, Jew the Jewish community in particular has suffered violence and faces very real threats from across the hate spectrum, from domestic violent extremists to foreign terrorist organizations. And because of that, the FBI considers the enduring threats to the community to be among our very highest priorities. The Colleyville attack is a terrorism-related investigation in which the Jewish community was targeted and the investigation is being led by the North Texas Joint Terrorism Task Force. As the FBI responded to the Colleyville the Police Department's request for assistance on Saturday and before Malik Faisal Akram ever made a single demand to law enforcement, he committed a felony under Title 18, United States Code Section 247 when he forcibly kidnapped four hostages while they exercised their right to worship at Congregation Beth Israel. This is a federal hate crime. As negotiators began to engage with Akram, he repeatedly demanded the United States release a convicted al-Qaeda terrorist in exchange for the safe return of the hostages. In doing so, his, his actions clearly met the definition of terrorism as defined in Title 18 of the United States Code, Section 2331. As my team learned these initial facts, we immediately opened an international terrorism investigation. Let me be clear here. This was both a hate crime and an act of terrorism. The FBI has primary investigative jurisdiction for both of those violations. The FBI's top mission priority remains to protect the United States from terrorist attack. In this case, we brought every tool to bear towards that end and we continue to do so. On Saturday night, I explained that an independent investigation of the shooting incident would occur. While the results of that review are not final, today I am able to confirm some key details of the final moments of the hostage crisis. As the hours passed and Akram's behavior changed, he wasn't as communicative with the negotiators. He, he became combative and issued ultimatums and deadlines. As my leadership team and I were making this assessment, Rabbi Charlie and the hostages seemed to have come to a similar conclusion. And just after 9 p.m., two near simultaneous plans of action unfolded. I authorized the, hostage, the FBI's hostage rescue team to make entry into Congregation Beth Israel on the south and west sides of the synagogue. As the teams approached, FBI Dallas SWAT encountered three, the three remaining hostages running from the northeast exit of the synagogue. The teams continued moving to the synagogue and made entry into the building. Akram's death was a result of the deadly force employed by the FBI. I'd like to take an opportunity to highlight the work of the crisis negotiation teams throughout this incident. The professionalism and expertise of the negotiation team combined with the composure and judgment of the hostages set the conditions for a successful resolution. This included the negotiated release of one hostage shortly after 5 p.m. and it facilitated the tactical delivery of food and medical aid to the hostages. 
during the crisis. Rabbi Charlie and the other brave individuals who were held hostage are survivors and they are heroes. This remains an ongoing international terrorism investigation. While I'm limited in the information I can provide in order to maintain the integrity of that investigation, I will confirm that we continue to coordinate with our international partners through our FBI legal attache offices in the United Kingdom and elsewhere. We continue to work with our intelligence community partners to learn as much as we can about Akram, his associates, and his motivations. We are following up on a high volume of viable leads as this is an evolving investiga investigation into a terrorist who crossed global boundaries and who was not known to and did not have prior contact with U.S. intelligence or law enforcement authorities. We are rigorous, rigorously conducting analysis of Akram's associates and media, including his personal devices and online accounts. We're working hard to learn more about how Akram acquired the firearm he possessed. And of note, specifically, no explosives were recovered at the scene. To date, we've had significant success in tracking Akram's movement and identifying persons with whom he interacted while inside the United States. This includes from the time he landed in New York on December 29th until he entered the Congregation Beth Israel Synagogue on January 15th. I'd like to thank our partners to include the New York City Police Department, the Dallas Police Department, the Fort Worth Police Department, and of course the Colleyville Police Department for their assistance in these efforts. I'd also like to thank the members of the public who voluntarily provided critical information in getting us to this point. The FBI is particularly skilled at amassing and mobilizing resources in response to a crisis such as this. In Dallas, we responded immediately with agents and analysts. Our victim specialists arrived to stay with family members as the hours passed. Our Dallas critical incident response team, including crisis management coordinators, SWAT, evidence response team, and crisis negotiators mobilized. A command post was established and staffed, and it included staff from Congregation Beth Israel. Resources from Quantico and FBI headquarters immediately engaged and began supporting our efforts. Within hours, on-scene resources flowed in from our critical incident response group, and this included the FBI's hostage rescue team, additional crisis negotiators, additional intelligence analysts, behavioral science experts, and additional crisis management coordinators. Throughout the day, we worked through legal process with technology providers and other partners to establish operational advantages. We received immediate support from our local, state, and federal law enforcement partners. And at present, we are leveraging all resources at our disposal to analyze and exploit data and evidence at the FBI laboratory, at our operational technology division, and at the North Texas Regional Computer Forensics Lab. We will continue to devote resources to this investigation as long as needed, and I want to thank each person who has been working steadfastly since last Saturday to ensure in the pursuit of justice. As the crisis shifts into investigation, we continue to apply the same rigor to our investigative intelligence and operational practices. It's what the American people expect, and it's our FBI mission to protect the American people and uphold the Constitution of the United States. While we have not seen any specific or credible threats related to this incident, my team in Dallas and the entire FBI continue to work with our partners to identify and mitigate threats to the Jewish community and others. Members of all faith communities should not have to be worried about the threat of violence at their services. Since Saturday, my colleagues around the country and the leadership of the FBI have been engaging with the Jewish community to provide updates, to reaffirm our commitment to protecting faith communities, and to highlight available resources. The FBI and our partners at the Department of Homeland Security have significant, valuable training and awareness resources available both online and directly through our field offices across the country. Additionally, we work very closely with the ADL and other similar organizations to increase awareness, provide training, and inform communities about threats. I was struck by the welcome message on Congregation Beth Israel's website. In part, it reads, we care about you, we strengthen each other, you have something to contribute. I, can th I can't think of a better sentiment at this time. Rabbi Charlie was a rock, even amidst his own crisis. He was a leader and a teacher and a protector. He provided safety, orchestrating a daring, successful escape. Personally, his conduct throughout the day provided me with a level of comfort and confidence that is difficult for me to explain. Rabbi Charlie, the heroes you were with, your congregants, your families, have endured unspeakable trauma. We care for you and we seek to strengthen you. And as you have shown us your strength, we hope to do the same for you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite Rabbi Charlie Citron Walker to the podium.
Thank you all for being here. I just want to express my gratitude this afternoon. I want to express my gratitude for the FBI, for, the law, for all of the law enforcement that were involved in this operation, for the hostage negotiators who, and that whole team, uh, from negotiator Matt to who I was on the phone with and who was that voice, uh, that calm voice on the other end, um, on speakerphone uh, the entire time, uh, to ev everyone that was a part of this. I want to thank Chief Miller and the Colleyville PD because, and, and in addition to thanking Chief Miller, I also want to thank Mayor Richard because, as I was just telling him before we came in, because of, right, I've been, I've been around here for a while, and he was the first mayor to establish a ministerial alliance, an opportunity for clergy and city officials to come together and meet on a quarterly basis. We would get regular updates uh, from uh, police and fire and so many updates about all the construction, right, Jerry? Uh, <laughs> and because of that relationship, when Chief Miller came on as the, new, as the new chief a few years ago, I had his cell phone. I knew him personally. I had a relationship. And so when I had the opportunity to text with him and communicate with him about our situation, I had that resource available in that moment. And so a huge thanks to Mayor Richard, a huge thanks to Chief Miller, a huge thanks to everyone who was involved. And along with that, I've, I've uh, again, we haven't done this enough just to thank uh, Mike Finfer, who's our current president, but before he was the president of Congregation Beth Israel, he was our house chair and our safety lead. And he was the one who really pushed us as a congregation and as a community to make sure that we had plans in place, to make sure that we had and we took advantage of the trainings that were offered to our community. Uh, so. I stand up here before you with great gratitude just to be alive, with such appreciation for all of those small little details that add up to something that fortunately was pretty miraculous. And so with, with gratitude uh, to God, with gratitude for all of those individual human efforts that allow us to be here today. I'm just overflowing with gratitude. And let me also just add one more thank you to all of the media who's been camped out here in Colleyville. Thank you for your time and your energy. I know this hasn't been easy for y'all either. Um, and just uh, with great love to Congregation Beth Israel, great love to the Jewish people, and great love for all of the support uh, that we have received over this past week. It's truly, truly been overwhelming. Thank you. Okay, we do have a few minutes for questions if there are any. Sir? Sure. 